Hey, Troy Dean here again, and in part three of this video training series, you're going to discover the entire system for winning clients, delivering great projects, and creating streams of recurring revenue. I call it the Digital Agency Blueprint, and it's the exact system used by thousands of my students all over the world. And I'm gonna walk you through a flowchart that explains the entire system in just a moment. And if you stay with me until the end, I'm gonna send you your very own copy of the flowchart that you can print out and keep next to you as a reminder. But before we dive in, I just wanna say a huge thank you again for all the comments and positive feedback we've had on the first two videos. I'm super excited to see how you guys are taking this all in, and it's been really cool to see how excited you're all getting too. Now, if you didn't catch them, in the first two videos, we talked about why now is the best time in our history to be growing a digital agency. Firstly, we live in very uncertain times and having your own business is a great way to get freedom over your time and secure your financial future. And secondly, in the face of all this uncertainty, the web is going from strength to strength with hundreds of millions of dollars being invested in the software that powers the web and still around half of all businesses don't even have a website. So these really are the golden days for web designers and digital marketers and the demand for what it is you do is only going to grow. Finally, a digital agency is a great business model because it allows you to work from wherever you choose, whenever you feel like it, and with the clients you choose to work with. And the profit margins also happen to be very high because you're selling digital services. However, it's because this opportunity is so ripe for the picking right now that it's becoming very competitive. So there's a few things you need to make sure you win. One is to differentiate. Be unique in some way, otherwise if you're talking about web development or logo design or SEO, you'll become a commodity pretty quickly and then the only thing you have to compete on is price and that's a fast race to the bottom. You need to be able to articulate what it is you do in a way that resonates with your ideal client and moves them to take action. And as we spoke about in the previous video, this really comes down to how you present your process in the middle of your high ticket sales funnel. More about that in a few minutes. Secondly, you do actually need to have a very clear process in place to manage your client through the journey of their project. This protects you against things like scope creep and content delays, but it also provides a superior experience for your client and it's the number one thing you can do to exceed their expectations and turn them into a raving fan. Finally, you've got to build enough recurring revenue to cover your operating costs so you can pick and choose the clients you take on. I promise you this will change your life. Now in a perfect world, and why not live in a perfect world just for a few moments, all of the things I've just mentioned would be laid out in a beautiful, easy to follow document that you could reference on a daily basis to remind you what to do when. Wouldn't that be sweet? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna walk you through in a moment. And then I'm going to email you your very own copy if you stay with me until the end. And I do mean that just like the previous videos. If you don't stay with me until the end, you won't get a copy because I wanna reward those of you who are taking action and who are ready to commit. Cool? All right, now if you've just stumbled in here and you have no idea who I am, I'm Troy Dean, CEO and founder of WP Elevation. You can hear my full story in the previous videos, but the short version goes like this. I started out in my spare bedroom with a dream and not much else. No formal qualifications, no money, and no network of clients waiting for me to learn how to build websites. In a short space of time, I grew an agency, worked on some really cool projects, and since 2007 I've started a plug-in business, been invited to speak at conferences all over the world, launched a top-rating podcast, and been fortunate enough to coach thousands of freelancers and digital agencies through my online programs and masterminds. Yeah, I've worked from some of the best beaches in the world and launched projects from really fancy hotel rooms, flown business class across the globe, and helped over 150,000 people in 140 different countries. But we're not here to talk about me. What I really want to do is dive into this flowchart that's going to help you understand the entire digital agency blueprint and how it all fits together. Are you ready? Let's do it. As I mentioned in the previous video, it all starts with the breadcrumbs you use to attract great birds. It may also start with a referral from your existing network. Either way, the first point of contact needs to be the top of your funnel so your prospect can get to know you a little and understand the problems you solve and your process. Once they opt in, they'll be able to dive deep into the topic they need help with through your educational piece of content, which is at the heart of your funnel. Remember, this piece of content is designed to blow them away by being super helpful and actionable. 
You essentially want to teach them how to do one thing they're trying to do and give them everything they need. Worksheets, templates, cheat sheets, whatever they need to do it themselves. Then a small percentage of them will make an inquiry or apply to work with you, depending on your particular market and how busy you are. At this point, you should run them through a client scorecard to get a sanity check on whether or not they're a good fit for you. If they're not a good fit, refer them on or politely decline. It's totally okay to do that. Look, just because someone needs your help and you have the skills to help them does not mean you are obliged to take them on as a client. If you do choose to take them on, you wanna run a discovery session of sorts to work out their needs. Now, depending on your model, this can be a free phone session you offer during which you close them into one of your services, or discovery can be a paid service on its own that you offer as a half day or full day workshop. Again, depending on your model, after this discovery session, you'll either be onboarding the client or you may need to write a proposal and nurture the relationship a bit until they sign on. Either way is fine. Once they've signed on, they go through your onboarding process, which can be as simple as a couple of pre-written emails, or if you're like one of our students, Alyssa, it could be as detailed as an eight week online course to make sure they're prepared to start work with you. Then your job is to deliver the thing they've bought. Again, how you do that will depend on the products or services you're providing. But what's really important here is the way you communicate with your client and the experience they have as they move through your process. In fact, the client experience is really the only thing that will set you apart and help you build a long lasting business. So this is a series of touch points, some automated, some not, and the entire experience is systemized and driven by processes, sequences, and templates. You might also need to offer your client some training towards the end of the process so they can contribute to the project. This is especially true if you're in the business of launching websites. Next, you want to offboard your clients and manage their expectations about the level of support you can offer once the project has been delivered, and ideally transition them to some kind of care plan or ongoing retainer so you can build up your recurring revenue. We have students nowadays who only work on recurring revenue, and believe me, it's a game changer. Okay, so I know you have a ton of questions right now, like what do I put on the application form in my funnel? What kind of homework do I give them before the call? What do all the emails say? When do we write proposals? What does the client scorecard look like? How do we get existing clients onto care plans? And these are all very, very good questions. And we're gonna answer all of these questions and give you all of the templates, swipe files, and step-by-step -step instructions you need to get this all set up in your business in the Digital Agency Blueprint program, which we're opening in a few days. Now don't worry, I'll send you an email in a few days with all of the details along with an amazing deal. So if you wanna take your digital agency to the next level, keep your eyes out for that email, okay? In the meantime, I wanna answer the top 10 questions that we've been getting over the last few days in our support channels. Are you ready? Question number one comes from Stephen. How do I generate enough leads? Well, Stephen, as I've been mentioning through this video series, the problem with lead gen is that people use this scattergun approach where they try and generate leads everywhere, and they end up just creating a lot of noise. The first step to generating high quality leads is to understand who you want as a client. Then put together some great educational content to help them solve their biggest problem, and then crumble that content into breadcrumbs that you leave around the internet with a trail back to the top of your funnel. Question number two comes from Eduardo. How do I close high paying clients? Eduardo, the trick to closing high paying clients is to let your marketing do the heavy lifting for you before you speak to them. If you follow the process I've been laying out in this video series, by the time you're speaking with a client, they will be pre-framed to want to buy your process. And your job is to work with them to see if they're a good fit and then to facilitate the transaction so they can start using your process. Now, of course, there are some scripts that you should use in the meetings and on these phone calls, and all these scripts are included in the Digital Agency Blueprint program. But your approach needs to be to position yourself as the authority and let your marketing do the heavy lifting so that you don't have to work as hard in the sales part of the process. Question number three comes from Matt. How do I compete in an overcrowded market? Great question, Matt. And again, this comes back to having a unique process you can take your clients through from start to finish to help them go from zero to hero. Your clients are at a certain point at the moment and they wanna to move to a new future. 
The way to differentiate yourself in a crowded market is to have a unique approach to take them on a great journey and provide an outstanding client experience to allow them to transform from where they are now to where they want to be in their desired future. Question number four comes from Camo. What happens if I get too busy, hire someone, and then don't have enough work to keep them on? Camo, this is a great question, and without getting too woo-woo, for me, this is a question of mindset. Human beings are very resourceful and very resilient. The truth is, there are no guarantees. It is possible that you will get busy, hire someone to help you out, and then you won't have enough work and you'll have to let them go. That is definitely a possibility. However, I would like to suggest overcoming the fear of hiring someone will make you perform at a level 10 times what you think you're capable of just so that you can avoid the pain of having to let that person go. In fact, every time I've taken a leap of faith like this in my business, my productivity and my performance has gone through the roof because now the stakes are much higher. Playing small and just feeding yourself is totally fine if that's what you want to do. But if you genuinely want to build a team, then hiring someone, possibly before you think you're ready, will catapult you to perform at a much higher level. Now, of course, you need to know your numbers and you need recurring revenue. The more recurring revenue you have in the business, the easier it is to predict whether or not you can bring people on from a cash flow point of view. Question number five comes from Lisa. How do I manage a remote team? Lisa, the biggest mistake I see with people managing remote teams, or any team for that matter, is trying to be too prescriptive. And they eventually end up trying to micromanage the team. This for me all comes down to vision and values. If you have a very clear vision about why your company exists and what it is you're doing, and the impact you wanna have on the world, and you share that with your team, and then you're very clear about the values you stand for and the things you believe in and how you operate as an organization, and you share that with the team, and in fact, include them in that conversation, then your team will blow you away with how creative they can be, how resourceful they can be, and how self-sufficient they can be. Every time I have troubles with my team, whether they're here in Australia or our remote staff, it's usually because I'm getting in the way way too much. Set the tone for how you wanna operate as a company, why you exist, and what it is you're trying to achieve. And then set your people free and let them go create wonderful things and come back to you and tell you what they've done. I promise you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And it's a lot easier than trying to document everything and micromanage people. Question number six comes from Megan, Chris, and James. They all have the same question. How do I scale while maintaining a great culture without burning out? This is a great question and it dovetails really nicely from the previous question. Again, for me, this comes down to vision and values. It's important to understand your strengths and your weaknesses and hire people to combat your weaknesses. I know a lot of people will tell you that you need to work on your weaknesses so that you can become an all-rounder. That's just not how I roll. I think you should hire people who have strengths that you don't. And I believe you should hire for character fit and then continue to develop their skills. I also think that culture is something that grows organically out of the interactions that your team members have with each other. I don't think culture is something that you can dictate from the top down. Now from a tactical point of view, the way to scale without burning out, again, is to share a really strong vision and set of core values with your team. Involve them in that conversation and that discovery process. And then empower your team to make decisions. And if you're becoming the bottleneck through which every decision needs to be made, push back on your team and ask them, what do you think? What do you think we should do? What would you do if this was your business? What should I do in this situation? Ask your team for advice. You cannot be involved in all of the decisions in your business. Hire people who share your vision and your values, empower them, and then let them go create. Question number seven comes from John. What if I can't get the results my clients expect? John, this is a great question. And it comes down to setting and managing your client's expectations. Let's take SEO as an example. If anyone promises a client that they can get them onto page one of Google, they're a bit shady. No one can guarantee anything in life. I can get you a flood of traffic to your e-commerce store, and I can probably increase your conversion rates through your online checkout. But if your customer support is horrible, or your shipping and return system is broken, I can't guarantee those customers are gonna be happy. I can't guarantee they're gonna stick around very long and refer their friends. And I also can't guarantee that they're not going to leave you a bunch of bad reviews online. I can't take down bad reviews off Google. No one can accept Google. 
So you see, you need to educate your clients, set their expectations and manage their expectations. What we do as service providers in this wonderful world of web design, development and digital marketing is we facilitate our clients going on a journey to get closer to what they want to achieve. We cannot guarantee outcomes. Part of this is a mindset issue for me too. I've worked with plenty of clients over the years who, for whatever reason, have some kind of self-sabotage mechanism built in. The project starts out with all good intentions, everything's moving in the right direction, and then they just disappear and don't deliver any content for three months. They're effectively sabotaging the success of their own project. The very thing they told me was important to them. And in that case, there's nothing I can do. Your job is to help your clients get closer to what they want to achieve. And if you set and manage their expectations well, and you deliver on your promise, then you can sleep easy at night. Your job is not to run their business, and your job is not to grow their profits. That's their job. It's their responsibility, not yours. Question number eight comes from Ben. What if I'm not a very good designer or developer or insert skill set here? And this is a very, very common question. And there's two parts to this one. I think a lot of us have been sold a lie. A lot of us have been sold this story that we're only one funnel away or one campaign away or one hire away from whatever nirvana it is that you're trying to achieve. The truth is, no funnel or campaign or clever marketing is going to compensate for you promising something you cannot deliver. If you cannot deliver, don't promise it. Be completely honest and transparent with your clients. When I was starting out, I would say to my clients, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to figure it out. And that's why you're only paying this much, because I don't expect you to pay for my education. However, when I do figure this out, I'm going to blog about it. I'm gonna share this with my audience. I'm going to leverage my education on your project for my future benefit. What's in it for you is that you're going to get this project a lot cheaper than if I was really experienced. If you're working with nonprofits, for example, and you're building a website for free for your portfolio, use that project to get PR for yourself and for the charity, they'll love you for it. So make sure you can deliver what it is you're promising. The second part of this is you don't have to have a particular hard skill in order to succeed in this business. And what I mean by hard skill is development or design or automation or conversion rate optimization or SEO or whatever those actual skills are. Maybe your skill is in consulting. Maybe it's understanding what the client needs, knowing enough about the technology to design a solution for them but not actually being on the tools. That's certainly my sweet spot. My sweet spot is in communicating, listening, and designing solutions. I love playing with the tools, I'm just not very good at it, and I'm not very efficient. So don't let self-doubt be the enemy of your success, just because you feel like you're not good enough in a particular area. You can learn whatever you need to improve your skill set. The real question is, what do you enjoy doing the most, and what adds the most value to your clients? Question number nine comes from Andrew. How do I stop clients telling me which themes and plugins to use? <laughs> Good question, Andrew. The way to get clients to stop telling you what plugins and themes to use is to have a great process that your clients buy before they meet you. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's in the absence of your process that your clients will start to design their own process. And that's why they're telling you which themes and plugins to use. Have a great process, trust in your process, and put that process into the marketplace. When people buy your process, they won't micromanage you. And question number 10 comes in on a daily basis. Can you help me? Well, yes, I can help actually. There are three ways I work. I have a done for you program, which is a six figure investment and a 12 month commitment. I have a done with you program, which is a five figure investment and a 12 month commitment. That's our mastermind program called Mavericks Club. And of course, I have my online training program called the Digital Agency Blueprint, which will be opening in a few days. So if you're watching this video right now, the Digital Agency Blueprint is the perfect place for you to start. It's going to help you take everything we've talked about in this video series and give you all of the templates, swipe files, and resources you need to fill in the blanks and install it in your business. And then at some point, when you knock it out of the park, I'd love to meet you in Mavericks Club but that's a conversation for another day. So what exactly is the Digital Agency Blueprint program? Well, it's a carefully curated online training program with incredible support from our coaches and global community of digital agency owners. It's delivered as a series of short training videos around specific topics 
with templates and resources you can download and start using straight away. I started this back in 2013 as I was frustrated by the lack of business training that was designed specifically for digital agencies. Since then, I've helped thousands of graduates through this program and continue to evolve and improve the training based on real world feedback. But for the first time ever, I'm including some additional training in this program to help solve the biggest problems I see coming up over and over again, having a steady stream of new clients and building recurring revenue. Now I have two rules when it comes to my training. I don't teach anything unless I've proven it works over and over again in different size agencies and in different countries. And I don't teach anything unless it's actionable and accompanied by a template or a swipe file or a resource for you to start using. So this isn't just a bunch of theory with links off to YouTube videos to learn more. It's battle tested and proven. The digital agency program includes templates for every part of the process I walked you through in the flowchart a few minutes ago. Templates and scripts for every part of your high ticket sales funnel, email copy for all of the emails, the website worksheet form you can import into your website in a few clicks, the client scorecard, proposal templates for just about any type of service you offer, client onboarding sequences, project management sequences and email templates, client offboarding templates, client training sessions, and of course, all the templates you need to migrate all of your clients onto recurring revenue care plans and retainers. We've also built some one-click automations to make it super easy to get the entire blueprint up and running in an afternoon. No kidding. Think of this as an accelerator to help you achieve your goals faster, accompanied by a really good harness to make sure you don't fall too far in case you slip. Now I know you have some questions, which is why I'm going to email you all the details in a few days when we open the doors to the Digital Agency Blueprint program. We're only opening the doors for a few days, so make sure you keep your eyes out for my email and jump in as soon as you can, because we will be closing the doors as soon as we fill up. Once again, thank you for staying with me until the end. You obviously know by now that this really is a great time to be growing your digital agency, and that's why you're still here with me. So to say thanks, I'm going to send you your own copy of the Digital Agency Flowchart so you can print it out and have it next to you as a constant reminder of this system that has worked for thousands of digital agency owners around the world. And remember, keep your eyes on your email inbox in a few days for all the details when we open the doors. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. We were not so much struggling, but we were just unsure about the direction that we needed to take. I, I tried a few other coaches and just found that the, the approach they were taking just wasn't for me. I really needed um, someone to help me solidify where the business needs to go, how to help me with all the systems and, and just to give me some clarity on where I needed to be. If I needed someone to hold me by the hand, I needed someone to give me that level of support so I didn't feel alone, I wanted to be um, guided. My name's Simon Major, I'm the owner of Practice Edge, we're in Diamond Creek about 40 k's north of Melbourne. Our ideal client is anyone in the healthcare field. Typically, we, we service the needs of chiropractors, physiotherapists, osteopaths, dentists, doctors, surgeons, those type of practitioners. I want it to be systematized. I want it to be more streamlined. I want it to be such that I don't have to be here. We're already looking at putting in a, a, an operations manager next year. I don't want to have to be here. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to holiday with my wife. I want to just start to enjoy life a little bit more knowing that the business is looking after itself, that we have systems in place, that everything will run smoothly and that most importantly people will get the results that they're paying for. WP Elevation, I was 80% sure it was bullshit and uh, I was going to get my money back in the 30 day refund policy but within two weeks we paid for the whole year because it was so valuable and then Mavericks has been just 10 times that. I decided to go. <laughs> and uh, see what uh, what's what's uh, what's included in the program and how it can grow my business and it did so after joining wp and implementing some uh, some of the processes into my business my mind was like boom screw this freelancing stuff and, and let's work on my branding and positioning and find better clients the biggest benefit of mavericks is really just the, the network i think the support group um there's so many people here that are doing things that are really similar to what I'm doing. There are so many people who are doing things that are completely different. Um, and it's just awesome to see, oh, that's what they're doing. Like, I wanna do that. Or, oh, I see that what that person's doing. It's working really well for them. I don't really know that that would be for me, but I'm so glad that I know about that as an option and just kind of 
um, yeah, really it's the, it's the minds that are here that are the biggest benefit. Blueprint no-brainer. If you are any, even if you're not even the WordPress field, you're a freelancer, Blueprint, no, no qualms about it. I, re, I have a WordPress meetup that I do and I'm always telling them, you need to do this. The mistakes that I made the first 15 years of my business, you won't have to go through that. You'll have this all ready for you. It's fantastic. Mavericks, if you're kind of at my level and you've, you've got a team um, and you just, like I said, you just want to get over that hump and you're not sure how and, and again, you're kind of feeling alone again, that's for sure the Mavericks group because it's not just Troy, it's not just him talking to you, but the, you're going to be surrounded by others in the same boat as you. With WP Elevation, I have a process I love and one that my clients feel too. One thing that's benefited me and has benefited many other people in the WP Elevation community is that once you join WP Elevation, the community engages with your journey, plus they're willing to help solve any problem with you as a web designer. So within the first year of being in the program, I made more on my business running it full time than I had at my day job and doing web design part time on the side. I made more in the first year. so. It's like kind of like no looking back. When I'm asked what the biggest benefit of joining Mavericks is, I have to say my business best friends. Like these are people that seriously care about me and my business and will go above and beyond to make sure that I'm okay and that we're growing. Um, from a very practical perspective, I've gone from being a complete mess, making things up on the fly, to having an entire business system. I really good at some things in my business but so many things I did not have in place. Didn't have a system for finances, I had no dashboards, I had no predictable products, I didn't really have any marketing machines, I relied on word of mouth. I was flying by the seat of my pants with my team and we didn't have any procedures in place and now I have all that and uh, that's pretty freaking liberating. I know basically how much I'm going to make every month through client monthly maintenance plans that I learned how to set up through the WP Elevation program. Uh, two, I have processes in place so my work week is incredibly scaled down and it's a much more pleasant experience. I'm um, able to, to do what I need to do in less time. And three, I know, have access to an amazing WordPress community through the WP Elevation program. The kinds of clients that I want to appear to appeal to have changed because I've got so much more confidence in the product that I produce and the way that I hand of my customers. It's very much a lifestyle business that I'm going for. I want to be in a place where I choose the, my clients, right? Where I'm not, uh, you know, I never have the temptation to work with someone just because I need the money. Um, but when, we, when I enter into a relationship with a client, we're entering in that relationship because we both feel really good about each other and about the value that I can bring and, um, and the, how much they value what I do. Yeah, so I would definitely uh, recommend Mavericks to you know, anyone that's, you know, if you're you know, struggling, you, need, you don't have like, a clear sense of direction for your business, or if you're just really take, looking at taking it to the next level, just you know, for me, for example, uh, I'm coming from having a full-time job, making the transition to running my own business. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, Mavericks to anyone that really wants to kind of elevate their business and take it to that next level. I've already had, you know, definite, definite dividends on my investment. I, I guess I've been a member for about two months now, and I spent the first part of my membership, the first three or four weeks, I spent just going through the forums, looking at um, all the, the previous webinars that you'd run, and kind of breaking down the blueprint into the little steps and seeing how is this different from what I'm already doing. And there were a lot of differences, specifically with the way you position yourself, um, the kinds of solutions that you're offering clients rather than you know, selling piecemeal technical kind of specs. Um, and so I spent the first three or four weeks just trying to figure out exactly where this was and I decided that I was kind of suffering from analysis paralysis mm. and not doing anything. So when I had a big opportunity laying in my plate um, for somebody who I knew that I could definitely serve that value to, I just took it from the very first step. I needed some outside help. Um, working in isolation is sometimes um, you just know that you might not be doing things as well as you could be and uh, you're not quite sure where to get the help from and I'd looked at a lot of different things like I'd even I'd, I was I was very close to signing up to doing an MBA um, but for the expense of it and and the time commitment 
and I, I just didn't know how relatable it would be for, for, for me and my business. It was almost like I might do this and then go on and do something else. Um, and then, you know, Troy's course came up. That was, um, that just really was, you know, exactly what I needed and I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, yeah. Oh my God, my mind has been blown away. I just spent four days with Troy and his team, but three days was specific to Digital Mavericks. We went out to dinner one night and I told Troy, this trumps anything that I have done and paid for that's been like twice as expensive. And he's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I have never participated in something where I've walked away with a tangible business plan, a strategy, templates. Like I didn't want to draw or write on anything because I want to use it again and again. But it just, it blew my mind. It far exceeded any expectations I had. And the caliber of people in this group, I was a little nervous because I'm not in it but they just totally opened with welcome arms. And it's really cool to see people focused, keeping their business simple, and totally growing recurring revenue.